Hey guys, in this video, we're going to talk about a very common problem with tracking in CG elements, whether it's 2D or planar tracking. Sometimes when you've been tracking something, no matter what you do, the track seems to fail. And there are a number of ways to improve track quality, but knowing where the actual problem lies and understanding the fundamentals is actually more important than understanding the tools in Nuke, which are pretty simple tools in themselves. Now this is just the footage of the shot and there are some hidden characteristics of the lens that are affecting not only the track, but also the CG integration. And if you aren't aware of these concepts before you begin a shot, you'll actually never be able to make CG look seamlessly integrated. Now before we jump into the useful techniques and showing you where these hidden problems are in this footage that affect the track and CG integration, I also wanna mention that this is actually a brand new project in the Nuke beginner series. So I continue to add new projects to this series here of practice projects and footage and assets that will make you a high level compositor. And we have some pretty cool new ones that we went to pretty extensive lengths. Like we hiked up a canyon in Iceland just to get this footage for set extensions and CG integration and you know full CG shots like this one as well. So if you're looking for a more advanced path of Nuke or you just wanna have a more structured learning, that's available in the description below. So before we start any track, we should think about what kind of track should this be and how far do we need to actually go for this shot? Like most of the time, 3D tracks can be overkill if it's just a very simple camera move like this one. So this is not quite a nodal pan, meaning that the camera is actually moving through space. And how we know that is because this pole and this background are moving separately. That means that the camera's not on a tripod and just rotating. However, we can almost treat it like a nodal pan, at least for this whole area, because it's all so distant and far away and it's pretty much behaving as if it's all in one parallax plane. So if we're, we're thinking about this area, just putting something right there. We don't need to do a 3D track for that. We can just do 2D track or we could do a planar track. So here I've done two different approaches on putting the track in the shot. So we tracked in this castle and I've just roughly masked it behind the hill for now. We're not really work, working on the CG integration at this point. So the idea here is to check our track. So this is a 2D track. I use just a tracker node. I also did a planar tracker node. So this tutorial is not about those very basic nodes or those concepts. If you took in the beginner series, you've already learned those concepts. So uh, essentially what we have here is this 2D tracked in and just masked in there. And maybe at first glance, you might think that this is actually fine. Now, depending on the level of production, level of QC, some things slip by in let's say lower level production or, or let's say cheaper production than let's say feature film. But feature film, this would not pass QC. And the reason why is if we zoom in, sometimes you need to scrub quickly to actually QC your work and to check it. But you'll actually notice if you pay attention to like the windows, where is the, where are the edges touching and are things sliding around? And we can actually see like at the end, it's kind of sliding. Now, is this just a bad 2D track? Did I, you know, do this improperly? Basically, what I tracked here was, you know, just one point here. Well, that's not actually what is causing this tracking problem. So it's actually because of the lens distortion. If we don't have a lens distortion profile, that's going to cause some warping on the footage and then your things will look like they're sliding, but your track actually might be perfectly fine. We talked about lens distortion earlier in some of the beginner classes as well, but if we don't have a lens distortion profile, if we don't have this grid that we've shot, you know, maybe they swapped the lens or they just didn't shoot the grid. What are we supposed to do in the situation where we get the sliding? So if I stabilize this, so I have the match move, which applies the tracking data. If I, rev if I invert that, and we can actually see this much clearer because sometimes it's hard to see it when you're just looking at it and maybe you just you don't even notice it's quite doing that. I always check my tracks with a stabilize. So if we invert that motion and we kind of lock off that area of the frame, so this will no longer move there we retract, but the footage still is gonna move. So if I hit play, now this problem is gonna become much more apparent. And to make it even more obvious, what you can do is scrub really fast on your, on your timeline. And now we can really see where this is sliding. So you can see like it's totally just coming off the edges here. Like if we check it here, we can see it's, the whole thing is sliding even though it is tracked in there. So this is really related to the lens distortion. It's not so much the track. Now the other thing that is interesting here that you might not have noticed if you just, you know, let's just watch it in motion again. We might think that, okay, it's just maybe slipping a little bit if you see it, uh, but what else is happening because of this lens? The other thing that's happening is there's actually a vignette affecting the entire shot, which changes the black levels on the entire shot. So if you pay attention to the center of the sky here, look at the level of brightness, especially where the black levels are touching this castle, look at the black levels and let's go back in time. You'll notice it actually gets darker. 
And so this is because there's a vignette coming from the lens, which is darkening the sky and, and the actual black level. So we need to animate the color grades that we apply to our CG in order to match this perfectly. Otherwise, you might match it on you know one frame, let's say our reference frame, our start frame is frame 77. Everything might look perfect. You might do the, your perfect job, but at the beginning, it won't match anymore. And you'd be like, well, I thought I matched the black levels. And so there's a few different techniques that you know are related to integration there. So how can we solve this lens problem? That's what this tutorial is about, is how do we solve this? Well, one thing you could do to reduce some of that stretching right off the bat, instead of tracking one point, is to do a planar track. So if you if you track an area, you know, it's gonna actually force some of that perspective and basically put some of that warp directly into your CG because it's going to be tracking you know the, the shape and the pattern rather than a single point of contrast. And so if we actually look at this is a planar track stabilized and we kind of do the scrub thing, we can see it's still sliding a little bit, but actually it's much, much better. So this is where a planar track can actually uh, be very useful for if you don't have lens distortion or you just want to track something quickly. So that would solve us uh, pretty close. But there's still that little bit of slide there and how can we just fix that at the end so that would just be a little bit of a manual adjustment so what i did here was i just did a very rough roto with a, a blend so i use an eye transform node and this is on nukipedia as well you could just google eye transform um, nukipedia and it's just a soft transformation so we can like subtly shift down the edge to make sure that everything sticks and then we can do that i did it in a few different areas and then just animate that. So if we look at the stabilized result and we look at the beginning and the end, what I'm doing is I'm shifting up the side of this thing with the footage that is warping. So we're just applying a very subtle warp to the footage. And now if we check it, check this out and we just hit play and we just look at this, it's actually sticking much better. And so a combination of those two, two techniques, we're doing a planar track to get rid of some warping, we're doing some hand warping to fix that is not uncommon. And here's the other key idea. Sometimes these lens distortion profiles, I've gotten them before where they're actually not 100% perfect. For whatever reason, maybe it's coming from a match with company, maybe they didn't have a grid. You can't always 100% trust this lens distortion profile in some circumstances. And that little warp, you might have to adjust it as well. Uh, when you get into stereo compositing, it can get even more complicated than this with uh, various things there, but uh, that's not for this tutorial. So that's pretty much it for how we can do this. Now for the vignette, uh, essentially, you know, it's just a manual manual uh, adjustment as well. So what I did for the vignette was pretty much just a very soft roto on the edge of the frame. And then as we kind of slide away, uh, it's it's taking the grade away. So you almost don't want to track this color grade at all. And you can slightly just darken your footage as that vignette is coming in. So it's literally just, I think, yeah, just slightly darkening it down. And then we're compensating for that lens to make sure that everything actually looks like it was photographed in the same uh, circumstance here. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Make sure to hit thumbs up if you guys wanna see more tutorials like this. And if you wanna grab the project files for this, like I said, it's in the course and there's a bunch of other projects to make it the absolute best nuke training out there. And I'm continuing to add even more projects this year. So it's gonna be uh, a pretty extensive update.